Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and First Edition Charizard. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at the Zabaz as the Glimmer Wasp Red-White Artifact Modular Deck featuring the 1-mana 0-0 Legendary Insect with a Modular 1, meaning it enters the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, and when it dies we may put all of its plus 1 plus 1 counters on target artifact creature. And then additionally, Zabaz says if a modular triggered ability would put one or more plus 1 counters on a creature we control, that many counters plus 1 are put on it instead. We can also use the red activated ability to destroy target artifact we control, so that's a way to potentially kill our own creatures to move the modular counters around at instant speed, and the white activated ability gives Zabaz flying until end of turn. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, first off the creatures, most of them are artifact creatures to go with our various synergies. We've got Ornithopter as a nice way to enable some of those artifact synergies at zero mana, Arcbound Mouser 0, zero with a lifelink and modular 1, Homunculus essentially 1 mana 2-2, two, two. Asper Sentinel can help us draw additional cards whenever the opponent tries to play a non-creature spell, and we can easily increase the Sentinel's power to increase that tax to make it more difficult for the opponent to keep up. Beaumont Courier can also provide card advantage by exchanging the exiled cards with our hand, which is hopefully empty. Bonnet Construct a 2-1 that cannot attack alone. Ginger Brute a nice evasive 1-drop. Hope of Girapur, a 1-1 flyer that can also be sacrificed to prevent the opponent from casting non-creature spells in their turn. Mere Scrappling, a 1-1 that can be sacrificed to turn into a plus 1 plus 1 counter, which also synergizes well with Modular. Same goes with Sparring Construct, a 1-1 that when it dies turns into a counter. And then Stone Cold Serpent can be played at any point in our curve, has a reach, trample, protection from multicolored, and enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Then at 2 mana we've got Arcbound Prototype, Modular 2, we've got Ingenious Smith which can find an artifact when it comes into play, and then if we play an artifact in our turn it can potentially pick up a plus 1 plus 1 counter. Then Luminarch Aspirin plays well with our modular creatures as well by putting an extra plus 1 counter on one of our creatures each turn, despite not being an artifact itself. Speedway Fanatic plays well with the vehicles in the deck, a 2-1 that can crew vehicles and give them haste. Then we've got Metallic Mimic, probably naming Construct most of the time, a 2-1 that can also potentially provide additional plus 1 counters. Then Ornithopter of Paradise, a nice ramp creature at 2 mana. And then Steel Overseer, one of the better payoffs for playing all these artifact creatures by tapping and putting a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each artifact creature we control. Then at 3 mana we've got Arcbound Tracker as another modular creature with Menace, and whenever we cast a spell other than our first spell each turn, we can put an additional counter on the Tracker. We've got Brea's Apprentice, which enters as a 2-3, generating a 1-1 Thopter token, and can tap and sacrifice an artifact to choose different modes between pumping one of our creatures, or we can exile the top card of our library, which we can play until end of turn. We've got Pianalar also generating a Thopter token, and has various activated abilities to pump our artifact creatures, or we can prevent blocks by sacrificing an artifact. Arcbound Shikari is another modular creature with first strike, and when the Shikari enters the battlefield we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each other artifact creature we control. Chief of the Foundry gives artifact creatures plus 1 plus 1. Then we've got Crystalline Giant, a 3-3 that can pick up all sorts of abilities. Foundry Inspector makes artifact spells we cast cost 1 generic mana less to cast. Palladium Mirror can also help us ramp by generating 2 colorless mana. Scarecrone is a way to return artifact creatures from our graveyard to the battlefield, can also be sacrificed to draw a card. Scrap Trawler also plays well with the sacrifice effects, because whenever Scrap Trawler or another artifact we control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, we get to return to our hand, target artifact card in our graveyard with a lesser mana value. We've got Shambling Suit, which grows with the number of artifacts and enchantments we control. Then at 4 mana we've got Traxos, a 7-7 Trampler that enters the battlefield tapped and doesn't untap during our untap step, but whenever we cast a historic spell, meaning an artifact, a legendary, a saga, those are all historic, we get to untap Traxos, it's also great at crewing vehicles multiple times in the same turn. Then we've got Solemn Simulacrum as a 2-2 that helps us find an extra land and draws a card when it dies. And Arcbound Whelp, another modular creature, this time modular 2 on a flyer, and also has fire breathing for a red mana. And then topping off our curve, Venerated Loxodon, which has Convoke, so we can tap a bunch of our cheap artifact creatures and put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on them. And Arcbound Slasher, modular 4 and Riot, so we have the option of putting an extra counter on it or giving it haste. 
And then a Mirror Enforcer has affinity for artifacts and is a 7 mana 4-4, four, four, so costs 1 generic mana less to cast for each artifact we control. So we can potentially even cast it for free if we control 7 or more artifacts. Then looking at our non-creature spells, we have some very efficient removal spells in red-white with of course Lightning Bolt and Swords to Plowshares. We also have Portable Hole as an artifact removal spell, Bone Splitter as a cheap equipment giving plus two plus two, and Shadow Spear giving plus one plus one a Trample and Life Link. Then the Ozolith also plays well with all our modular creatures as we get to accumulate more plus one counters on the Ozolith. At two mana we've got All That Glitters giving plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment we control. Barbed Spike, essentially a 2-1 flyer that then turns into an equipment afterwards. We've got Glass Casket, similar to Portable Hole as an artifact removal spell. A little bit of Ramp with both Arcane Signet, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone. We've got Heart of Kiron as a 4-4 flying vehicle with Vigilance and a crew cost of 3. Sky Skiff, another flying vehicle, this one a 2-3 with a crew cost of 1. Tome of Legends can also draw a lot of extra cards, especially with such a cheap commander that can even have an evasive ability. And then Shatter Skull Smashing can be played as a land or a removal spell. At 3 mana we've got Unbreakable Formation, putting a plus 1 counter on each creature we control, giving them Indestructible and Vigilance until end of turn. Tempered Steel, a nice anthem, giving all artifact creatures plus 2 plus 2. Ether Sphere Harvester, a 3-5 flying vehicle with a crew cost of 1, that can also potentially gain lifelink several times. Nettle Cyst, a living weapon equipment, so it comes into play attached to a 0-0 Phyrexian Germ token, and then gives it plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment we control, and then we can later move it to a different creature for two mana. Then at four mana we've got some more vehicles with the Weather Light, a 4-5 legendary vehicle with flying and a crew cost of three, and when it deals combat damage to a player we get to look at the top five cards of our library, reveal a historic card from among them and put it into our hand, so we'll always find something useful. We've got Untethered Express, a 4-4 vehicle with a Trample, crew cost of 1, and whenever it attacks picks up a plus 1 plus 1 counter, so it can quickly get out of hand. Mystic Forge, a great card draw engine, letting us take a look at the top card of our library at any time, and we can cast artifact spells and colorless spells from the top of our library, can tap it and pay 1 life to exile the top card of our library if we don't like it. Karn Sign of Urza can generate Karnstruct tokens with the minus 2, which get bigger the more artifacts we control, and then the plus 1 and minus 1 can generate Karn Advantage. Then we've got Showdown, which can also provide extra cards on the first chapter by exiling the top four cards of our library, and until the end of our next turn we may play those cards. And then on the second and third chapters, whenever we cast a spell, it generates an extra plus one counter. And then at five mana, we've got Forsaken Monument, giving colorless creatures we control plus two plus two. Whenever we tap a permanent for colorless mana, we add an additional colorless that also includes some of our lands. And whenever we cast a colorless spell, we gain two life. And then Sky Sovereign, our most powerful vehicle, a 6-5 flyer with a crew cost of 3, and when it enters a battlefield or attacks we can deal 3 damage to target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. And then topping off our curve we've got Ugin the Ineffable, making our colorless spells 2 generic mana less to cast, the plus 1 generates a 2-2 manifested token, and the minus 3 can destroy permanent, that's 1 or more colors. And then the Mortal Sun shuts down all planeswalkers, as we don't have many ourselves, draws us an extra card each turn, makes our spells cost 1 generic mana less to cast, and gives all our creatures plus 1 plus 1. And then quickly going over the mana base, got 8 basic planes, 6 basic mountains, then a few deserts, as these make colorless mana to synergize with our Forsaken Monument, so we've got Shafan Dunes and Ramana Ruins. Then of the Bugbear, a nice creature land, then we've got a bunch of regular red-white dual lands, Ether Hub can make more energy for Harvester, also colorless for Forsaken Monument. Animal Sanctuary has a few creature types to go with it. We've got Blink Moth Nexus turning into a 1 1 artifact creature with flying. We've got Buried Ruin to return artifacts from our graveyard to our hand. We've got, of course, Command Tower, Crawling Barons, an extra creature land. Inventor's Fair can gain life and maybe tutor up one of our artifacts. And then Karn's Bastion helps us proliferate, also plays well with all those plus on plus one counters. Radiant Fountain gains 2 life, Spire of Industry fixes our mana, Sunscorched Desert deals 1 damage to the opponent, Treasure Vault counts as an artifact land, important for many of our synergies, and finally Zalfern Void scries 1 when it enters the battlefield. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand I would say. We'll need land 3. But we've got a few things we can do in the meantime, facing a Huatli tokens deck. So having ways to fly over with our Thopter and Zabaz is going to be useful. I 
actually, let me go turn one hope over Zabias. So I don't have to spend the mana flying over in case they have a turn one token. And then Mirror Enforcer should be pretty cheap. I guess we'll prototype now to be more mana efficient. Alright, so double one drop for now. Opponent adding to the board before playing Hotly. And there's my lanes, so can either Nettle Cyst or Pia. Either way, I should be able to play a very cheap Mirror Enforcer next turn. So... I guess given that our opponent has all these chumpers, there's an argument for just making more flyers. Although if they play Hotly, plus... They can add a lot of loyalty, and I could maybe move the Nettle Cyst equipment onto a flyer to finish off Hotly. Which I'll be unable to do if I play Pia. Hope and Prototype can attack. I don't think my opponent's likely to block those. I guess even Sparring Construct, honestly. Sure, this looks fine. Opponent takes it. Could even sacrifice Hope to prevent him from casting Hotly to begin with. But I'll wait. So six mana total. For a March of the Multitudes for 5. Yeah, that's a good one. Lots of lifelinking tokens and a Conclave Tribunal, probably exiling the Nettle Cyst. Yeah, that was a very good turn. Unbreakable Formation... Isn't bad, but I think I'd rather play Pia first. And then... Probably gonna leave prototype on defense, although if her opponent has any sort of anthem effects like Shafet Junes, we're in a bit of trouble. I guess uh, Sparring Construct could attack as well. Now it's time for Hotly. Up to 12 loyalty. So next turn they could ultimate to start drawing cards. Portable hole. Doesn't do much for me, so I think it's time for formation. And send everyone at Watley. And our opponent will lose some creatures to try and save her. So they can still minus eight to emblem. Well done. Well done. The crowd is yours. The bigger the audience, the better. We're slightly ahead on board, but we'll see if that card advantage is gonna make a difference. Via into Leafkin. They can still make a token with Castle Ardenvale here too. So not loving my chances. That uh, double Convoke turn was quite backbreaking. Mystic Forge unable to be cast. So I can Portable Hole Ovia. Play Mirror Enforcer on the cheap. And then I can start thinking about potential modular shenanigans with Zabaz. So, do I send everyone? I think I do.
opponent's gonna make a token draw card. Alright, just a single block here. Um, do I want to do anything with Zobias? I could kill the Leafkin to deny quite a bit of mana. Yeah, maybe like destroy my own Sparring Construct with Zabaz to get the extra counter. Does that seem reasonable? Opponents at 8. They'll probably gain a bunch of life here. But I can hit back pretty hard by moving all those modular counters. Although only have the one red mana. Migration with Kicker draws a lot of cards. Can also use Pia to sacrifice one of my artifacts. So I can potentially sacrifice Prototype and then Zabaz and put a ton of counters onto like a Hope of Girapur. At least that's the plan. Beast draw card, so they still have two mana left, plus maybe Convoke Shenanigans Oath. Pumps the team, so they can send the Life Linkers, so we get to block one with Enforcer. So your opponent can maybe go up to 14. And then the question is, can I deal 14 damage? So let's say I sacrifice Prototype with Pia. Then I get to move four counters onto Zabaz. Up to seven. Sacrifice Zabaz, move eight counters onto Hope. So that's 10. 11, 12. So my two damage short. Uh, is there another line available to me? I can pump with Pia, but only once. I could fly Zabaz and just sack Prototype. I can prevent a few things from blocking, but opponent has so many ground creatures that it doesn't matter. Could also sacrifice Hope to prevent them casting non-creature spells next turn, and then try and kill them over the course of two turns. It's also reasonable. So how about... I sacrifice... Prototype... onto Zabaz... Fly Zabaz... Send in the flyers. And then sacrifice Hope of Girapur. And then hope for the best. It's gonna be Trostani to pump the team. So do I want to sword one of the tokens in response? Otherwise it's going to gain three. I think that's fine. Then I can sword Trostani instead of the token. Now they could still cast non-creature spells in my turn. To potentially mess with our plan. Vanguard up to four. That's fine. Still have four mana available. And a Knight of Autumn could destroy Zabaz, but then I move the counters onto the flying token. Or they could try and do something else, not sure what.
destroys the mirror enforcer so they can attack with the uh, three threes. Sure. So opponent's pretty much tapped out. I can sword Trostani, block a lifelinking token. And hopefully I'm not dead. I'm at three. Opponent up to nine. And yeah, we've got exactly nine in the air here with our flyers. Can I guess pump with Pia as well? Oof, what a close game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing the Gitrog monster, so land synergy deck. And I've got a nice hand. Turn one. Find to either Zabaz or Scrampling. Guess I'll play my commander. Then uh, turn two Signet into the other one drop. And then probably want to play the Shikari once we have all our other artifact creatures in play. All that glitters are also gonna beat down pretty hard. So the Nettle Cysts, of course, doesn't count as an artifact creature since it's equipped to a pest. So I could play Shikari next turn and then maybe play Nettle Cyst equip right away on the following turn if I draw land. Shade not gonna be able to block. I think that plays out fine. Mouser into Shikari. And then we've got all these modular creatures that represent more damage if we decide to destroy them with Zabaz. Scute Swarm can help the opponent go wide. Don't have a great evasive plan other than, I guess, Zabaz flying over. And I did draw the land. All right, so let's see here. I could Nettle Cyst equip to the Mauser. Or I could equip to Zabaz if I'm planning to fly over soon. Don't think the extra life gain really matters. So I'll set myself up to fly over next turn. Sir Tooth for an extra land. If they also have removal for Zabas, we could be in trouble. Two mana left, three cards in hand. Enter the unknown. Okay. So for single mana, there's not much else they can do. I guess an extra land for. Now a Scute Swarm token, Reclaimer, one card in hand, so opponent should be that to his advance activation unless they've got like a fatal push. So yeah, impressive start from our opponent as well. But could even go for the all that glitters here for maximum damage. Sweet onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Kambal. Luckily, don't have a too many non-creature spells to trigger the ability. Hand seems nice. I've got an Ornithopter to ramp into Monuments. So I want to make sure to play most of our colorless producing lands before having the Monument in play. So we can make extra mana on the following turn. For now, just uh, play our commander out. Turn to Ornithopter. Could also go for Overseer first, as we're ramping into 5 drops and not 4 drops. Yeah, I guess Steel Overseer for now is fine. So they seem to be kind of a black-white life gain deck. Check for traps is unfortunate, it's gonna take away one of our powerful 5s. 
Sky Servant, pretty nice answer to Kambal. Ornithopter, not quite as good as Ornithopter of Paradise here, but actually still decent. Even have Animal Sanctuary here with our snake to put extra counters on it. So what if I just kind of go all in here? Seems reasonable. And then next turn I could play Sky Sovereign. If not, I can maybe still activate Animal Sanctuary. Right, Skyclave probably goes for Steel Overseer. So that still allows me to play Sky Sovereign. PL's not bad either. So we'll see how they plan to deal with Sky Sovereign. Kaya. Not bad on this board. Lots of permanents they can exile with a minus one. Except for Stonecoil, which has protection from multicolored. Exiles the classic Ornithopter. Alright, time for Pia. Which can crew the Sky Sovereign. And then can attack with the team, or I can grow Stone Cold Serpents. And then I guess we'll send Zabaz at Kaya. And then Sky Sovereign will kill the veteran. And I'll use a Sanctuary. Opponents at 8. So they'll need a sweeper. And Gift of Estates, not doing much. And Kambal. Alright, looks like that's game. Crystal and Giant, Crew Sky Sovereign, kill Kambal, attack with the team. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Goreclaw. And my hand seems okay. I've got Portable Hole for an early mana creature. And then Mirror into Showdown is a pretty good late game. So do I need to scry at the moment? Not really, as I'm happy with my current curve of turn 2 Sky Skiff, turn 3 Mirror. So I can kind of wait and see what else I'll need. If I draw land, I can scry land to the bottom. If not, I might want to draw one. Alright, now I'll probably Portable Hole plus Hope. And then I guess I'll scry for land. Apprentice isn't bad, but I already have Mira 3, so that can go. Holding the Ornithopter in case I can uh, make use of it later. Like maybe to untap a Traxos or what have you. Alright, time for Mir. Hit for two. And I guess playing Ornithopter on the second or third chapter of Showdown also gives me an extra counter. Oracle of Moldaya is a good one. Another forest on top. Alrighty, so... I can showdown and sky skiff. So let's showdown. And then I can play a Tomb of Legends. Or I could play sky skiff right now. Next turn, play a land and a scarecrow, plus maybe a shambling suit. Yeah, I think Tomb's fine. So 
So a lot of mana into Gorklaw with Elder Gergroth on top. And a Hydra's Growth to grow the Oracle, sure. Ooh, Swords is a pretty nice draw. So, probably want extra white mana. Can play Scarecrow, put counters on Zabaz. And then I think I keep Swords for Gergroth, or I could exile Oracle right now. Which is also reasonable. Since that's providing passive card advantage, whereas Gergroth kind of needs to attack and block in order to do so. Yeah, sure. I guess I'll play my Ornithopter now. And then I can play a Shambling Suit. Attack. They might go for the trade. At which point I can sort to put an extra counter on Zabaz. Opponent's about to take it, so let's exile Oracle. And keep growing Zabaz, so if they destroy it, I can move all those counters somewhere else. And our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, pretty far ahead on board here, thanks to the extra mana from Mirror and the cards from Showdown. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Extus. So it could be a Mardu colored deck. My hand's a little clunky, too many expensive cards, so we'll take a mulligan. This is better. So looking at a turn one Zabaz, can play Shadow Spear, and then got a couple options in three. Hunted Witness, so they're probably leaning more on the Awaken the Blood Avatar half of Extus. It's kind of a sacrifice engine. Crime Trawler could come in handy. Opponent stuck on two lanes. Let's go with uh, Crystal and Giants. Picks up Hexproof right away. It's a uh, good ability. Field of Ruin lets them play magic. And a Bastion of Remembrance, fair enough. Let's get Weatherlight down. Crystal and Giant gains Reach and attacks for three. Next turn we can crew Weatherlight with either one of these. Shadow Spear is going to make it difficult for the opponent to race. And I can always sacrifice the Zabaz to awaken the Blood Avatar. And then I can even let it go to the graveyard to eventually get back with Scrap Trawler's ability as opposed to having to pay the commander tax. And Judith joins the fun. Opponent attacks, I'll take four. Shadow Spear easily lets us win a racing situation. Although now Judith means they can potentially uh, kill my one toughness creatures with the sacrifice triggers before making me sack something more relevant. Um, which is perhaps a reason to play a scrap trawler here over Nettle Cyst. And then I could also play a Sentinel or I could equip Shadow Spear. Kind of like equipping Shadow Spear. So. We'll crew. And equip. Or I could also consider just playing Sentinel to maybe let them draw when they cast Awaken. Which is also reasonable. Start by attacking. Gain Death Touch. And we'll see what we find with Weatherlight. Found a mirror scrampling, which I kind of like here. Can play it alongside Sentinel. Hmm. 
I didn't tap my mana optimally. So the auto tapper kind of got me here. I guess it was keeping up Zabasa's red ability. Oh well. I guess I didn't need that energy anyways. It's gonna be a Senchmore Witch for now. So not going for Awaken just yet. Get to untap. And... Could move the Nuddlesis to a different creature. Could equip Shadow Spear. Got a lot of options. Um, probably start by playing Nettle Cysts. Can I just kill my opponent here? I guess I can. Crew tapping the germ, and then I can still move the Nettle Cysts. Which is kind of cute. And then attack for 12 in the air. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Turn 1, tempted to play Beaumont Courier first to start accumulating extra cards. Facing Orvar the All Form, so probably some sort of combo deck. Play our Den. And then I can play Zabaz and a Court Homunculus. Alright, so off to a nice start. Pillar of Origins, I can put in a Portable Hole. And then Mystic Forge will be a nice play next turn. So I'll probably just play a Smashing Tapped. Exile the pillar and attack. Still have Beaumont Courier's ability available. I guess it could have been worth it to keep up an extra land in case I want to just lightning bolt the opponent's face and sacrifice Courier. But getting a Mystic Forge down seems nice. My opponent is going to return it to our hand, that's fine. So we lose the Exalt cards, don't get to find out what they are. But uh, hopefully play Mystic Forge here, or I could wait a turn and just double spell in case my opponent has a counter spell up. Sure. So we'll attack with the team. Could have potentially played Pia with a one mana up. In case your opponent has a soft counter, like Jory Disruption or Sensor. But it doesn't look like it. Is your opponent already down to 15? Can finally play Orvar. It's gonna be Talrand instead. Find target for Lightning Bolt. So... Let's go for it. And then I'll probably just bump with Pia. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand, assuming I can find land number 3. Inspector making my Sky Sovereign cheaper as well, up against a Yarok deck. So I guess against Yarok, Sentinel's not going to be amazing. And 3 damage is not enough to take it out, so maybe that makes it a mulligan. Is this better? Yeah, I guess so try to ramp into Forsaken Monument as quickly as possible. Which we can do thanks to Guardian Idol on turn 2. Opponent on a Field of the Dead version, which I guess is most multicolor decks. Still missing white mana for Mauser. Alright, Nettle Cyst could be a reasonable play, or I could just go for a Scrap Trawler. Which is probably still better for now. And then I guess I'll keep a Blinding Bolt here. It's 
still nothing from our opponents. Can play Solemn to guarantee land 5 for Monument. And get my planes. Alright, so Monument's gonna be pretty strong here. As we see Green Seekers, that maybe dies to Lightning Bolt. But first things first, play Monuments. And smash. And then... Next turn, I essentially get to untap with 8 mana. Thanks to all these extra colorless sources. Opponent could play their commander, goes for binding on monuments. Fair enough. Well, opponent's already down to 7, so most of the damage has been done. And I can probably figure out a way to win the game here. Let's say we bolt the Green Seeker to get rid of it, and then I could get fancy with uh, Arcbound Mouser here, play it, destroy it with Sabaz, get an extra modular counter. And then can even turn on Guardian Idol. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and yeah, hand seems fine. Can play turn one Zabaz, or I can get this Snarl out of the way to then curve Aspirant into Nettle Cysts. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, do it like this. Facing Tiamat, so 5 color Dragon's deck. Probably not the best matchup for Glass Caskets, is my guess. So, do I want to play Nettlesist or Chief? Nettlesist now, next turn. It's probably going to hit for more once I play Chief and Zabaz. And then I could diversify a little bit. Opponent's going to brainstorm. Guardian Idol could be nice. Could maybe set up Immortal Sun next turn if I draw land. Although, then I can only play Zabaz here over Chief. But maybe that's not so bad, because if her opponent has a Sweeper, I also don't want to be overextending into it. Four colors, put on passes, maybe keeping up a card draw spell. Oh, let's find out. That resolved. Start putting counters on Zabaz, which plays well with modular. And our opponent gonna putrefy the Nettle Cyst itself, but we still get to keep the Germ token with two counters. And our opponent explodes, yeah, just uh, too fast of a start. Seeing the power of Nettle Cyst here, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Sorin Vengeful Bloodlord life gain deck, and my hand seems okay. Couple ways to generate extra mana with Guardian Idol Ornithopter. As we see Shadow Spear. Lightning Bolt could come in handy. A 
also reasonable to play Hope of Garapur first. So we can maybe make better use of the modular trigger if they play a removal spell. Turn two, I'm thinking Guardian Idol. Portable hole, an answer to Shadow Spear as well. Yeah, the upside of Ornithopter is I can potentially play two colored spells next turn. But Idol's a bit safer in the face of potential removal. And I would really like access to three mana next turn. And then I can maybe go Smith plus Hope. Hallowed Priest for now. Should still be able to kill it with Lightning Bolt. Now I could go Smith plus maybe Ornithopter. And then have even more mana next turn. Portable Hole also just a clean answer to Priest even if it's very large. And I don't think my opponent will be interested in trading for Zabaz. Technically there are a few ways to gain life at instant speed for a single black, but none are commonly played. Probably just a Shadow Spear that's holding priority. Right, I'll say it. Can protect priests. Unless they tap out. Okay, so we have a lot of options for mana total. I'm thinking Crystal and Giants. Uh, step one. And then maybe Portable Hole, Hallowed Priests. Play Court Homunculus. Sure. And our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Alright, on the play, up against Muldrotha. And our hand seems fine. Happy to play Sentinel, turn one. Turn two Overseer, take it from there. Slasher, not one of the more exciting cards, but just wanted to include all the modular cards to synergize with Zabaz, even if some of them are a little bit weaker. And hopefully Sentinel draws us a few extra cards, although typically a Muldrotha deck isn't going to play a ton of non-creature spells, as most permanents are indeed lands and creatures. Right, so we'll Overseer. And then Overseer and Sentinel is not a bad combo. Right, Signet draws a card. Nice. And I could Mirror instead of Sabaz. That seems better. Hit for two. So kind of the dream start here. Hopefully no sweepers in our future. Thassa's fine. And then Slasher versus Sky Sovereign. On this board I'm liking Slasher more. And we'll give it haste. And I'm pretty sure I can figure out a way to deal lethal damage next turn. Especially with Zabaz moving counters around with Modular, could potentially provide extra damage and yeah, opponent packs it in. Sweet. So yeah, overall I've been quite impressed with this red-white Zabaz deck. It has these very explosive aggressive starts, but it can also play a late game since we have so many card draw engines throughout the deck with cards like Mystic Forge, Showdown of the Skulls, 
We've got uh, Karn as a nice planeswalker. So there's definitely a lot to it. So being able to have those quick wins as well as grind out long games is uh, a nice quality for one of these brawl decks to have. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.